Algebra 2 students. Miss Fiorello here coming in live from her couch. So in today's lesson, it's going to be an introduction to what we call complex numbers. So we've been solving radical equations, we've been dealing with radicals, but back in the day, mathematicians thought, well, what about when I have an equation like x squared equals negative 9? Up until today, we would put something like no real solution. But what they decided to do is to define a number such that when it gets squared, it does equal a negative number. Um, and we're going to just learn how to um, operate with, the, with these numbers, how to simplify them, how to add, subtract, and multiply. So I'm just going to go through and read this. So let's see. Um, sometimes we will encounter equations that have no real solutions. So we have to rely on a number system with the imaginary unit indicated by the letter I. So you usually draw it um, with a little curve on the end so it doesn't look like a 1. So now the letter I is a number, an imaginary number. We can take the square root of a positive, num a positive numbers like 9, and it equals 3, right? because 3 squared is 9. Um, technically... The correct answer, like if you were solving x squared equals 9, would be plus or minus 3. Um, but when we t try to take the square root of negative numbers like negative 9, we can't do it because no number multiplied by itself will give you a negative. Right? 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. No matter what, you always get a positive when you square something because 2 positives equal a positive, 2 negatives equal a positive. So they define this new number, this imaginary number i, um, to be the square root of negative 1. That's what it's defined to be. So if I take the square root of negative 1 and I square it, we learned in class that anything squared is just itself. And it's the only time when you square something that you get a negative output. So i squared is negative 1. Um, so when you square this imaginary number, it becomes a real number. So you can make some nice little jokes like we're keeping it real. No need to write that down. <laughs> okay, so let's see some examples. So we have a square root of negative 121. Now this is the same as if I were to split it up into this like a little imaginary part, the square root of negative 1, and the product with the square root of 121, something we know how to deal with very nicely. Um, the square root of 121 is just 11. And now instead of writing the square root of negative 1, I'm just going to say that's the number i. It's i times 11. Now the proper way to write this is almost as if the 11 is a coefficient, and then we put the i last. So this would simplify to 11i. So what you're going to do differently now that there's a negative under the radical is you're just going to rewrite that root of negative 1 basically as an i. Like this step of writing it as negative 1 times root 28, you can kind of skip it and just write i root 28, but I want you to realize that that square root of a negative becoming the i, this is y. Because I can split up that radical into the square root of negative 1 and the square root of 28 um, and have this like imaginary coefficient. Now root 28, I still have to deal with like we always dealt with and find that largest perfect square and simplify it. So root 28 is 2 root 7. And then that i is still there being multiplied. Now the proper way to write our answer for this one is you put the number first, then i, and then the root. The root always goes last. Um, now if you ever have like i with a product of just numbers, um, you can multiply the numbers together. Like if you have 2i times 5, you'll have 10i. And there's nothing you can do with i to the first power. You just leave it. However, if you end up with i times i, so negative 3i times 2i is negative 6i squared 
if you look back here, this is what's really important to memorize, is that i squared is equivalent to negative 1. Because when I'm squaring the square root of negative 1, it's going to just be negative 1. So we're actually going to write this as negative 6 times negative 1 and get a result of positive 6, positive 6. Now if these examples are going too fast, feel free to pause the video. That's the beauty of this video. You can rewatch things again or take a pause, whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm going to do two more examples, like the ones you're going to practice. Let me look back. I squared is negative 1. You never want to leave an I to a power in your answer. That's a wrap. So, okay. So, I have the square root of a negative 147. Now, I know this negative, I'm going to first, um, sometimes we say like pull out an I. That's not what, what's really happening, but it's I, the square root of negative 1, times the square root of 147. So now I'm just left simplifying 147. And lucky for me, I wrote this problem. So I know that that's the same thing as 49 times 3. And that I is still there. The square root of 49 is 7. And then I'm going to be real fancy and write it correctly, 7i root 3. And that's my answer. Right? We're not solving, we're just simplifying. Later we'll solve equations where this is in the answer. But right now we're just learning how to deal with this. All right, number six, a lot going on here. Um, there's nothing I can do. It's all being multiplied, right? One term, negative 3i times the square root of negative 18. So this negative, I know, is going to become an i. This is the square root of negative 1, which is the same thing as i, imaginary number i, root 18. And that negative 3i is still there as well. So I'm trying to use these colors. So I put this in red. Now that i is here. And if I have i times i, I know that's i squared. So we got negative 3 times i squared times the square root of 18. And you might be thinking, ooh, she said something about i squared. Because it can always simplify. i squared is the same thing as negative 1. So I have negative 3 times negative 1 times the square root of 18. And right now I turn this into a problem that's very simple. Maybe you saw this on day 1 of radicals. 3 times the square root of 18. Largest perfect square in that 18 is a 9. The square root of 9 is 3. And my answer is positive 9 root 2. Awesome. So just to recoup here, this minus, we wrote as an i, root 18, right? Ne the square root of negative 18, that's not a real number, that's an imaginary number. It's i times root 18 but it gets multiplied by this number on the outside, and when I have i times i, it's i squared. I rewrite that as a negative 1, keeping it real. Um, negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, and I simplify that root 18. Okay. Make sure you practice. If you have any questions, please ask them, and we'll see you soon.